Hey everybody, how are you? Okay, welcome, welcome. We are ready for a great show today. We're gonna do a lot of fun things. First, I'm gonna show you a new place um, about in my neighborhood in Mitzbay Rijo. You can see that today is a very hazy day. I don't know if you know that word, hazy, but you know how like, usually you could see so far out into the distance? Today, it's very hazy. It's almost like there are clouds, but they're not really clouds. I'm not sure what they're made of, but you can't really see that much today uh, because it's so hazy today. Hopefully tomorrow will be nicer, but it's still, the weather is nice. You can sit outside and you can breath, breathe fresh air, but we don't have our usual view. You can only see really inside Mitzbay Richa. You can't see too far out, but it's a good thing that I saved this for today because today I'm going to show you something inside my town. That's we're going to start with something new in Mitzbay Richa. And then I'm going to tell you a story of somebody named Binyamin Hatzadik from the Gemara about Binyamin Hatzadik. And then we're going to talk about something special that I have in my house to show and tell. And maybe at the end, we'll have a special guest. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm so happy that you're with us. And now let me show you. I always tell you I live in Eretz Yisrael. I live in a place called Mitzpeh Yericho, which is a beautiful, beautiful place with beautiful views and amazing people. And it's very quiet here and very nice. And now everybody stays home all day long. So we're in Mitzpah Yericho, and I'm gonna show you something very, that's very exciting for me, but I have to move the camera. So I'm gonna take you with me, okay? So here we go, I'm gonna show you. And maybe, if are the Moses boys watching? If the Moses boys are watching, if they came out onto their back Merpeset, we'd be able to see them. But I want you to tell you, do you see how there's nothing really on these mountains over here? When I moved to Mitzpah Yericho, over there, there were no houses. Do you see how there are buildings over there? There were no houses in Mitzvah Yericho when I, over there. There were a lot of houses in Mitzvah Yericho, but over here, there were no houses. And then they started to build and knock down parts of the mountain. And they started taking down parts of the mountain. And we were like, what are they doing? Why are they taking apart the mountain? And they told us they're going to build homes there. And we were like, hmm, really? On the top of a mountain when there's nothing there, there's going to be homes? And then all of a sudden, all these machines started coming and all these trucks started coming. And they built a special path. You see this like sort of half road. It's not a real road. It's some road for all the trucks to be able to get all the way over there. And then they started building these houses. I'm going to zoom in so you can see the houses really up close. Okay. And you can see how in each of these buildings, there are five buildings. There's one. And then there are four more over there. Okay, and each of the building ha buildings have about six or seven different families in them, and they each have a porch. You can see the porch on them, and they all have parking spots, and they're beautiful new apartments. And slowly but surely, they started to build these houses. Okay, they started to build them. Let's see if we can zoom out. They started to build them right across, and then they started getting finished and having roofs put on them and windows put into them and then all of a sudden this year a little after rosh hashanah time the families started to move in and there are 33 different families that live there okay 33 different families there are 33 different apartments in those buildings okay and they're all i think all every single one of them are very very young families very young families with a lot of little kids and there are a lot of little kids that always play there. And they are really happy there. And we're really happy to have them. Now, let me tell you why it's so special to have them there. This is Eretz Yisrael. And Eretz Yisrael is the land of the Jewish people. Right? Hashem said, you can have Eretz Yisrael. This can be your land. It's your land for the Jewish people. That's what Hashem told us. Hashem said, this land is going to be special for you. But there are some people out there who don't like the Jewish people so much, and they tell us that you can't build houses in Eretz Yisrael. And we're like, that's not fair. Why not? And they said, well, those have, this isn't really for the Jewish people. And we say, nope, you're wrong. Hashem told us. Hashem said this is for us, so we get to build there. So every time we build houses like that here in Eretz Yisrael, so it's a big silcha. It's very happy for us. So when those houses were built, we were really, really happy about it. Now, 
I'll show you one other thing. If we turn the camera a little, they didn't just build houses here. Look what else they built. I'm gonna turn it, turn it, turn it a little. Can you see over there? What's over there? Do you see? There, let me put my finger right almost on it. I'm not so good at this, right there. A big park for all the kids that live here to play in. Okay, it has slides and swings and different paths where people can run and different places you can hide and play hide and go seek. Different things that you can do in that park. It's a huge, beautiful new park. So we're really, really happy in Mitzbe Richo to have these new houses. And I'll tell you something else. Right behind those houses, right, because it still looks like it's not finished. There's a lot of like different paths and everything. Right behind those houses, they are going to build 66 more houses. Isn't that amazing? So we're really, really happy about that. And that's what I wanted to show you, a special part of Mitzbei Richo that we really, really love. And that if you ever come here, you can come and see the new part of Mitzbei Richo. And in fact, there's usually one family who watches, two little boys who watch with us, every single day and they live in those houses in Mitzvah Yericho. Okay, so I wanted to start off because I always like starting off showing you something special in my house or in the town that we live in and now you get to see, oh, I forgot to tell you the name of it. The name of that place, it's called the Shechuna, it's a neighborhood and the name of the Shechuna is Mitzvah Bereshit. Okay, Mitzvah Bereshit and like after the Parsha Bereshit and Mitzvah is like like Mitzvah Yericho, the place you've got. So everybody that lives there, if you ask them, where do you live? They say, well, I live in Eretz Yisrael. Where in Eretz Yisrael do you live? I live in Yehuda. That's the part we live in. And where in Yehuda do you live? We live in Mitzvah Yericho in Yehuda. And where in Mitzvah Yericho do you live? And then they would be able to say, and only they can say this, that they live in the brand new part called Mitzvah Bereshit. Okay, hope you like seeing that part of our town. I love showing you parts of our town, okay? And that's the idea. And that's what we love about our city. And one of the mommies here thinks that she's being cute and she said, am I trying to sell all the little kids places in Mitzvah Breshit? And the answer is no, because all the houses have already been bought and all the families live there already. So, huh? Not trying to sell anybody, just trying to show how beautiful it is. Okay, here we go. Are you guys ready for a great story? I am ready to tell you an amazing story. In every single town, every single town, there is, with as long as there's Jewish people there, they always have a person who, this is incredible, they always have a person who lives, okay? Yes, and Aviel said to me, asked me if, when he comes there to stroll, can I show it to him? And the answer is yes. You can definitely, I'll show everybody if they come visit me. When everything gets better, everybody can come to Mitzvah Yericho and I'll show them exactly where I show you everything. Okay, now, let me tell you a great story. Do you guys, I don't know if you guys can hear the music. There's a truck right now going around Mitzvah Yericho, the place that we just talked about, and it's playing music really loud to cheer everybody up because nobody's allowed to leave there really around their houses. So this truck goes around Mitzvah Yericho almost all day long playing loud music for everybody. And then they have a drone that goes around and you come and wave to the drone. And I guess they're going to make a movie of it or something. I don't know. It's always a fun day here in Mitzvah Yericho. Okay, let's get to our story. So we were talking about in our story about how there is in every single town what's called a Gabai Tzedakah. The Gabai Tzedakah is the person. It could be a man, it could be a woman, it could be a lot of different people, it could be one person, it could be basically anybody, but everybody has to trust them. Nobody could think for even a second that, they, forget about stealing money, that they would even ever lose money. They have to be so, so trusted, like the most trusted people in the world, okay? And what they do is, the reason why they're so trusted is because everybody comes to them and they give them their stuck of money, okay? They say, let's say every day everybody takes a dollar or a shekel 
or a rand or whatever you whatever you use in your in your country and they put it aside once a day and they give it to, to somebody to hold on to and they hold on to that to that money and they say if there's if you see a poor person please give this to them and the guy by Tzedakah knows all the poor people you ba you have to be able to hear this music okay so they give all the poor they take all the money and they from everybody that's all the stuck of money and they put it in a spot and then they know the poor people and they'll call the poor people on the phone and say listen i have some money for you you need some money now and there's nothing wrong if you need money if you need stucca that's okay and we have money for you to buy whatever you need if you need um shoes if you need food if you need a place to live a table whatever it is i have money for you okay and the people giving the money to the guy by stucca don't know who it's going to right it's a secret poor people are in their town and the guy by stucca doesn't tell the people who gave the money so that way nobody knows anybody so let's say you go to shul or you go to school and the person sitting next to you is the poor person or you're the poor person okay and the person sitting next to you doesn't know that they either gave you money or that the person next to them is the one that gave them the money it's a big secret and only the guy by stucca knows who's giving stucca money and the only the guy by stucca knows who's getting the stucca money okay now when it's a very hard job to be the guy by stucca you get to make a lot of people very happy but also also, sometimes you make people sad because maybe you don't have enough money to give them. Or sometimes you have to tell somebody, listen, I know you think you need money, but you don't really, you're not really so poor. There are other people that are, that are more poor than you, and therefore I can't give you money. So what happens is a poor person comes to them, let's say for the first time, and they need money. And they sit down, and let's say they drive a very fancy car. And they drive up to the to the guy by Stucka's house and he says, I don't have any money to buy food. So the guy by Stucka might say, listen, maybe you should sell your car and you should use that money before we give money for Stucka, right? That's when you, the Stucka money to you. So that's why it's very, very hard to be a guy by Stucka. Also, people might come to the guy by Stucka and say, I'm only gonna give you, I'm only gonna give you Stucka money on one condition. If you tell me who you're giving the stucca money to, and the guy by stucca might say, no way, I'm not going to do that. And he said, well, then I'm not going to give you money. And the guy by stucca knows that the poor people need the money, and he really wants to take the money to be able to help them, but he's not going to do it if he has to give away secrets and embarrass people. So it's a very, very hard job. But one time, there was a person in the Gemara, his name was Binyamin HaTzadik, and the Gemara tells a story about Binyamin HaTzadik. And Binyamin HaTzadik was the Gabbai Tzedakah of his community, where he lived. And every day people would come to Binyamin HaTzadik and say, Listen, I just bought a building, and then I sold the building for a lot more money than I bought it for. And I made a lot of money, and now I have a lot of money. And I want to give, like the Torah says, I want to give 10% miser of that money to Tzedakah. So I have a lot of money. They take out a lot of money and give it to him. And, he's, and they say, I want you to give this to the poor people. This Shabbat, all the poor people should have enough food and they should have great food and they should really enjoy Shabbat. And he'll take the money and he'll give it out to all the poor people so they have. Or Pesach is coming. In our community, our Gabbai Tzedakah, Rav Kreuzer, is collecting money for families that might not have so much money now. Maybe they don't have a job now. And he's going to give it out to the different people that need the money. So we go to Rav Kreuzer and we give. In this town, it was Binyamin Hatzadik that would collect all the money. Now, one year, Binyamin Hatzadik had all this money and he gave it out to all the poor people. He made sure he had enough for all the poor people. He made sure he knew all the poor people were and he had all this money for the poor people. He gave it out and he felt all the people that gave him stuck of money were going to be so happy to know that he helped so many people. And all the poor people in the town were happy. Everybody was so happy. And he was so happy. He made himself a cup of coffee to sit down and relax. It was so much work collecting the money and so much work giving out the money. And now he was able to finally sit back with a good cup of coffee and relax. And there was a knock on the door. Well, opens the door and there's a woman there. She's crying. She's already crying. 
He says, I'm so sorry, I don't know what happened. Well, come on in. And he sits her down, he gives her his cup of coffee, which she didn't drink from yet, because then obviously you couldn't give it to her. And he gives the cup of coffee, and she's crying, and she can't get calm down. She can't calm down. And Binyamin Atzadik says, take your time, take a deep breath. And she's crying, and she finally calms down. He takes out tissues for her, and he gives her cu the cup of coffee. She's drinking the cup of coffee. She finally comes down, and she says, I'm so sorry to bother you, but I heard that you are the guy by Tzedaka. He says, I am. He says, well, I don't have any money. I have seven sons, and they're all great boys, and I love them so much, but unfortunately... My husband died, and I'm what's called a widow. I'm an almana, and I don't have any money. And I heard you're the guy by Tzedakah. Can I have some money? And he said, oh, oh, no. I gave out all the Tzedakah money. And he said, maybe there's some left. So he runs into the secret hiding spot, opens up through everything, and there's no more money left. What's he going to do? This woman really needs money. She has no money. She has seven sons she has to feed. And seven sons she has to give clothing to. And seven sons that need a place to sleep. And she doesn't have any money for them. He doesn't, what's he going to do? So he comes back out. He's really in trouble. And he sees that she's finally smiling and she's calm. And he realizes that she's smiling because she thinks he went into the other room to get her money and now he's back and he's gonna give her money and she's gonna have enough food to eat and enough clothes for her sons and enough places for everybody to sleep but she doesn't know he's about to come back and say I'm so sorry I don't have any money he doesn't know what to do so he realizes he can't tell her no if he tells her no she's gonna be really sad so what he does is he, he goes out and he doesn't know what to do. And he comes, he sits down at the table and he takes out his, he goes out, he takes out his wallet. He looks at his wallet and he realizes he has money for himself for Shabbat. And it's for his family, but he realizes this woman really needs it. So he takes out his money and from his own pocket, he gives her enough money not just for this Shabbat, not just for the next Shabbat, not just for Pesach, but for a whole month. And she looks at the amount of money and she says, this is how much money you give out for Tzedakah? And he says, I want to make sure that you're happy. So he gives her all the money and she walks out. She's so happy. So much money. So much money. She's never had this much money. She's so happy. And Binyamin Atzadik sits down he doesn't know where he's going to have enough money from for his family, but he realizes he probably did the right thing. Well, a couple of years later, a couple of years later, he, Binyamin Atzadik, unfortunately, gets very sick. He gets very sick. And it, the, the doctor comes into his family and he says, I'm so sorry. I don't think he's going to make it. I don't think he's going to get better. And the Gemara tells the story about Binyamin at Tzadik and he's not doing well and his family's crying. Binyamin such a Tzadik, Gabay Tztaka, a big Talmud Chacham. How could it ever happen that he's not going to have enough money? What's going to be? I can't believe it. And the Malachim in Shemayim, the angels come to Hashem and they say to Hashem, Hashem, Binyamin Atzadik, do you remember what he did for that woman? He saved that woman's life. He didn't give her money from the Tzedakah Fund. He didn't give her money from all the people that gave money. He gave the money from himself. And then we know that whoever saves one life, it's as if he saved the whole world. How could you let Binyamin Atzadik die? How could that happen? Hashem, listen to the Malachim. And he gave Binyamin at Tzadik 22 more years to live. 22 more years because he did that mitzvah. Now, what does that tell you? It doesn't mean that we have to give all our money away to poor people. It does mean that we have to give money, some of our money, especially when they need money. But it also tells us that we have to make sure 
when somebody is very sad, that we have to make them feel better. And that's what Ben Yaman at Sadiq did. He made the people feel better. He made this woman feel better. Much more important than giving her money was that he made her feel that everything was gonna be okay. And a lot of times, now when we're trying to stay healthy and everybody's home all day long, a lot of times people, maybe our brothers or our sisters, and maybe ourselves, maybe our parents even sometimes, get a little sad. And we should make sure we do something. Maybe we give them a hug. Maybe we tell them that they look so nice today. But we do something to make them feel special. That's what we should do. And if we do that, that's a huge mitzvah. And Hashem's going to see us doing mitzvahs. And Hashem's going to make sure that everything's okay with us. Okay? Now, that was a great story. I love that story. Now I want to show you something special for my house. I'm sure all of you have this. Okay? It's a very special thing. I love it. I use this on Shabbat. Okay? And this is my challah board. I put a challah here. I put a challah underneath. And do you know why we have a challah board? Do you know why? Why do we have two challahs? Well, when B'nai Israel were in the desert, right over those mountains, that's where the desert that they were in. Isn't that cool? Right here? B'nai Israel got two challahs. Okay? Sorry, they got mun that fell from the sky. Hashem would send them food, special food, called mun. It would fall from the sky. And on Friday, on Arab Shabbat, there would be two rolls for everybody that came from the sky, two rolls of mud. And now on a Shabbat, we have two rolls. But then also every day when the mud would come down on the morning, it would be covered by what's called tal. Tal in English is dew. So we cover our chalas to remember, we have two chalas to remember the mud that came from Shemayim that helped B'nai Israel when they were in the Midbar. And we cover it up with uh, to, with a cover on top and a, and a challah board on the bottom and we cover it to remember the mun that was covered with the towel and to remember the mun that fell from Shemayim when Hashem took care of us in the Midbar, okay? That is, that's our, let's go. that's our story. Now, I want to tell you something so special. Moshe, my son, was supposed to come onto my show right now and he was standing right here. You couldn't see him. He was on camera but Moshe, my son, is such a tzaddik he looked around and he realized it's getting to be the end of the day. And he has to daven mincha. He forgot that he didn't daven mincha. Usually we daven mincha a couple of hours ago and Moshe today didn't. It was really my fault. I should have reminded him to daven mincha. And Moshe really wanted to be on the show today. But he realized he has to daven mincha. He has to daven to Hashem. And we always have to make sure that we're davening to Hashem every day. It's so important now. Because we need Hashem to help all the people that are sick and all the people that are healthy, we have to make sure they don't get sick. So we have to dive into Hashem every single day. I hope you like this show. I hope you like seeing, let's look at them one more time, our brand new houses in Mitzvah Yericho. And I hope you like the story of Ben Yaman at Tzadik and how he helped somebody. And I hope you liked learning about the challah board and hearing about my son Moshe. Have a great day, everybody. Shalom.